Hello people and welcome back to a new vlog. I'm here in Salt Lake at home as you can see and today has mostly been all about work and chores. That seems to be the theme when I'm home and I'm not on the mountains hunting. So first thing I'm going to do today is actually take the old quad, this one, my Honda Foreman. I'm taking this to my buddy TJ who is a mechanic. I'm gonna have him service it and one thing I've noticed about this thing is it seems to really smell like gasoline all the time and, and it doesn't have a fuel leak, at least nothing I can find. It's been sitting on my porch for a few weeks and I cannot see any proof of a gas leak. But something clearly just does not seem right. Everybody I have ridden it around is like, I agree, it smells like gas. So we're gonna try to figure that out, give it a service, an oil change, make sure everything's running right. I've noticed the battery seems to basically be dead. Luckily it's got a pull starter, a rope, and it starts every time I pull it, first time. But uh, it'd be nice to have the battery and everything functioning. So I'm gonna cruise over to TJ's house, give him a visit and drop this beast off because I'll be going out of town anyways. I'm flying to North Dakota uh, in a couple days to go scout for whitetails. So I figured while I'm gone, why not get that thing running smooth and get it serviced again. Okay, we just made it to TJ's house and got my four-wheeler unloaded. Gonna get a little service uh, and oil change on it. It needs it, it's been a minute. But then there's some other things that I thought maybe TJ can look at and run through. So anyways, this is TJ, welcome to the vlog. What's going on guys? <laughs> what do you see? So I, I was telling him, I was like, dude, this four-wheeler constantly smells like fuel, like gas. I don't know, maybe he could find something out. So it's hard to exactly pinpoint quite where it's coming out of. I mean, it's got so much buildup, dust, dirt buildup around it, but with the car being so heavily saturated and dark like this, it's big remnants of a fuel leak, just like you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, fuel line, you know, looks solid. It doesn't appear to have any cracks anything there um, we could have gas this gasket right around here potentially could start warping and go mm -hmm. bad allow some fuel to come out all the vent lines seem to be intact no no cracks there um, there's one knob down here I don't know if you can come right over the top but right oh, where yeah. my fingers at right down here uh -huh. I saw so, that so this is your primer knob for your carb usually when it's really cold um, it just helps to prime it up get some more fuel into the cylinder for you to fire up on cold starts. I've seen that gasket go bad a lot. Um, not to the point of where the entire car body looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, there's other stuff that we've seen, but where you're smelling fuel, um, sometimes what we'll see here is the crankcase breather from the uh, crank coming up to the airbox, pops off of the airbox, blows oil all over the place just because it's naturally vented that way. It's down here at the bottom of the airbox. Seems to be intact. Doesn't look like it's open, leaking anything there. Um, I'm kind of get my hand right here underneath it down mm -hmm. there. I know we look at the air boots here, um, but what we'll do is we'll remove the air filter, shine a light through, try to see if we see any daylight coming through any of these boots right here. They could potentially be causing the same sort of deal. Mm -hmm. Everything runs good. The quads right. usually typically takes, starts right. Takes throttle with no Throttle's problem. Throttle's great. Just how I thought it was like suspect, you know, cause I'm like, man, not every four wheeler do I walk by and I'm like, oh, that smells like gas. No popping on D-cell, mm -mm. nothing like that. Other than that area, this, this old machine is pretty dang clean. Yes. I'm thinking about replacing the shocks cause uh, my buddy Ken just, he has the same quad and he put shocks on his and he says it rides so, so much smoother, so. I might put some shocks on it, get some of those like gas can attachments, maybe put here on the back for like a little backup gas can. But anyways guys, so TJ runs his own little mechanic shop right here. It's the 891 Suspension and Performance. Look, there's his trailer and his uh, canopy. He just got done with an event. But he services motocross bikes. Everything, what kind of business are you looking for? Everything. I do everything <laughs> from generators, side-by-sides, ATVs, dirt bikes and not just maintenance on them. Like I have a specialty as suspension mm -hmm. on dirt bikes, ATVs, and side-by-sides. Yeah, well. that's what I noticed. He, he's doing a lot of suspension work. That's what got me interested in maybe putting some on this. But yeah, if you guys live around Salt Lake, Provo, Ogden, Orem, anywhere around here, and you need someone you can trust, that's the biggest part. That's why I only bring my stuff to TJ. 
if you need someone you can trust to work on your quad to get ready for the hunting season or any motocross stuff or like you said generators and small engines uh check him out i'll put his phone number right here on the screen for you guys if he gives me permission yes sir you guys call him so ask for tj next on the to-do list is to get a couple things from uh harbor freight tools just some things from my trailer i need some parts to uh fix a couple things i always like to browse kind of see what else i can pick up while i'm here but uh that's the next thing on the list. The sun is starting to go down. It's starting to cool down just a little bit, but I think I'm gonna go home and work on the trailer for a little while. All right, got my new hose on. Let me uh, open up the propane. See if the stove works on the inside. I think I need a lighter, which by the way, I think I have one right here. How conveniently in the bed of my truck still from a camping trip. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Let's see if it works. It works. Let's go check out the stove situation. Oh, I can hear it. There it goes. I was gonna say, it sure smells like propane. Well, that works. That one works. That one works. That one works. We have propane. We have heat. Question. Would you guys run these for heat at night? If you had a vent open, a couple windows, would you run a small flame? Probably not recommended, but I'm curious. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Well, I'm gonna mess around with some stuff, try to figure out how to test the oven, make sure I'm not having any propane leaks up front on the tanks again, and then if not, propane's good to go. I have got a tote full of stuff that I'm gonna put in the camper so i figured i'm going to break it down and show you guys some of the extra things i'm just going to keep in the camper we got some pyro putty the hush fire starter we got it in summer blend and in winter blend we got one of each put those in the drawer for fire starter uh some long johns won't need those for a while but the cold hunts will be great and this is some items i had in the garage just kind of hanging out some first light apparel uh -oh, what do we what did we lose Check this out. We're gonna throw this in here. It's a big Cyclops TF 1500 flashlight. It comes with batteries, so that'll be nice. Everybody needs a good flashlight or two in the camper. Okay, it's kind of a mess, so let's go through here and see what we have. I've got a light here that charges with a USB port. Because of that, I figured it'd be good to have a Goal Zero solar panel so I can charge it through the USB and also this will charge other devices and items i have figured why not throw a camp chef striker in case i'm out of propane or don't want to cook on the stove on the inside i got a camp chef striker and a uh, propane bottle in there i got some extra gear by outdoor vitals so this is an outdoor vitals sleeping bag just a really small lightweight one and then an outdoor vitals hammock i've been using this on our shed hunts this is just a second one i had as well that i'm going to keep in here so i can relax when the time is right and when I have the, the trees and everything needed for it. Then over here I got a lot of knickknacks, a headlight, this is a Cyclops headlight, uh, more matches just in case, lighters for the fire starter or for lighting the stove. Uh, I had some extra AAA batteries, gonna throw those in the drawer there. A cow call, this is a Hush cow call by Phelps Game Calls. They also had some diaphragms that I threw in there just in case guys so these will be in the drawer no matter where i'm at this is obanoffs it is a leather boot conditioner we've got a no mess dress kit i think this is a girl's version but i had one or bridget had a bunch laying around so i'm gonna throw that in the drawer got myself a knife need one of those all the time a leatherman that i actually found while i was hiking hand and toe warmers small thing of sunscreen some towelettes extra pair of gloves First light gloves, some bungees. I'm sure with the trailer, pulling the trailer and having things falling around, I will need some bungees. Uh, tape measure, you know, for measuring whatever you need to measure, but hopefully antlers this fall. And yeah, that and then along with uh, another flashlight here, all kinds of first light apparel that I have plenty of. So that, a long sleeve wool, a vest, a merino wool vest, long sleeve zip up, a puffy coat, and a raincoat that we actually had embroidered with the Hush logo. So I'm gonna need to put everything away. We've got a rack here for clothing. I got a couple Hush hoodies in there already. We got a couple drawers 
I got some hoof it socks in there. So hopefully this could be clothing, some gear. These little drawers down here, maybe the first two can be like small knickknacks, kind of the junk drawer type of thing. And then we'll keep this side for food. Again, food and whatever else can go up there as well. And there's a little nice little area right here for like pots and pans and whatever will fit. Well, it's probably not the best time or the best day to uh, do a little test run with the trailer, but I've got time. It's dark now and it's cooled off, so I want to take the trailer actually down to the uh, pressure washer to give it a good clean and a good scrub. I'm gonna hook this up and take it down to the car wash. It is July 24th. It's like Utah's birthday and there is a lot of fireworks people putting off sparklers and all kinds of stuff so uh just got to be careful I guess I did swipe card here we go forgot to put that away that's a big no-no I need to put that away while I drive <laughs> good thing I didn't hit any low spots I bought this trailer for 300 bucks the guy only Sold it to my dad for 300 because he put new wheels and tires on it. All right, guys, I'm going to spray this down and then we'll uh, get it back home where it belongs. Dang, this combo is so mint. 2000 Chevy right there. That thing's not even that clean, but it's looking pretty good. Just sprayed off the trailer and everything looks good. I actually did a walkthrough um, on the inside with a flashlight. Checked around every single window and the air vent on top. Not one drop of water in the trailer. So pretty stoked on that. But now that that's cleaned and I gave it a brush, I'm gonna go back tomorrow when it's nice and clean every single window pane uh, all the way around. I got rid of the wasp nest. So everything's good. I'm super happy. This trailer would probably look really, really good with a paint job, but I might just keep it the original way. I'm not sure right now, but anyways that's it for tonight's vlog i'll catch up with you guys in the morning it is go time time for the gym guys welcome back to day two of the vlog today's legs day at the gym so that means i always try to plan this out and sometimes i have to i'll be honest sometimes i do skip leg day i'll be like okay do i have any big hunts coming up in about two days I tried to not have big hikes two days after leg day that is the absolute worst today is thursday and in two days i'll be in north dakota and even though we are going to walk the property line you see how i got to do that in this dang thing Seatbelt gets locked up but yeah even though we're going to walk the property line and go hang out out in north dakota i'm not too worried about there being long hikes it's fairly flat compared to what i'm used to anyways a lot of roly poly hills and uh creek bottoms and a ton of agriculture fields where we're going ditching the old house in the old camp trailer Took another walk through it today trying to think of like what else do i need for this dang thing if for those of you who camp a lot or have a camp trailer i'm taking any tips i've watched a handful of youtube videos already what do you guys recommend or think i need in the camp trailer if you have any little life hacks for them for pulling them for storage for decoration anything i'm open to ideas and as you can see it's pretty bare bones on the inside so let me know in the comments below back home after leg day whoa that was a great workout and i did my 40 minutes of cardio now i'm going to make a post-workout protein shake it consists of the mountain ops magnum chocolate but a heaping scoop of peanut butter one banana some chocolate almond milk and ice throw that in my little ninja blender and i have myself a post-workout recovery shake what is this oh baby two that is two large Papa John's oh, you pizzas. With, you went with the large. They huh? were on sale for a family oh, deal. Heck yeah. Yeah, check it out. We're going to have a big old cheat meal. Yeah, that's mine. Yours on the bottom. Pepperoni and all is for anybody who's wondering what kind of pizza I like. We just got done uh, shooting a video for the Hush Channel. We were up in the high country looking for mule deer, mostly checking trail cams. So excited to eat pizza. I can't even think straight. Forgot my keys. But anyways, we're up on the mountain looking at trail cameras and doing the whole summer scouting thing and i'll be honest not having the best of luck up there on my cameras or my tree stand but if you guys are interested in watching all the summer scouting videos those are on the hush channel but for now we are going to have an epic cheat meal i know martin's uh staying super lean 
I've reached my goal of hitting 170, 170 pounds before the bow hunt, and we're still three three weeks away. So now it's just about uh, maintaining that weight and not actually not getting too small with all the high activity we have. So we're just gonna grab some pizza, hang out for a minute, and uh, get some work done. Packing up for North Dakota. Fly out tomorrow morning with Martin. So I'm getting all the scouting done on the property I'm gonna hunt. It's uh, pretty cool. I was able to lease a piece of land that is plenty big. There's two hunters and a uh, plenty big piece of land. And so I've been dying to get out there and just set up some trail cameras and do some you know, like observation glassing and stuff in the morning and evenings. It's getting late. I have to be up at like 5:45, but I figured I'd just show you guys kind of the stuff I'm taking. So I have a whole bag of trail cameras. I went through each one. These are all stealth cameras, and I went through each one and put the model number on the top. Of course, put hush on them. Had to go through a whole bunch of SD cards. These are the ones I'm not taking with me, but I did fill up this case right here, uh, chuck full of SD cards. Anything that says ND is going to be, or is already deleted and blank for North Dakota. We will be taking optics. We'll be taking a spotting scope. This is what I deal with every day. Pretty much do a trip, come back, unpack. All right, figure out this, this trip is a little different. Repack. So I have spotting scopes, backpacks, and gear galore all over the house scattered everywhere i know i've been talking a lot about how excited i am for whitetail hunts and uh i'm doing another questions and answers and it's getting flooded on instagram with new questions one question i'm excited to answer and tell you guys about is my itinerary or what tags do i have for the 2019 season i have a lot and i will be doing a q a but i wanted to give you guys also the opportunity to put down questions in the comment box Again, I'll pull some questions from YouTube and I'll pull some questions from Instagram. But for now, I gotta pack up. I gotta get ready for my little trip. It's a busy week. We go North Dakota from Saturday to Tuesday. We fly to Vegas Thursday, stay at night and fly home Friday. And then I have a flight Saturday. Three flights in one week. So yeah, got a lot to do. I'm gonna definitely keep the camera rolling so I can you know, vlog all this stuff. And then again, I know I say this a bazillion times, but all the hunting stuff I do and all these scouting videos, they'll be over on the Hush channel. So I appreciate your support on both. And uh, for now, I'm just gonna say goodnight.